If you go back to understanding uh, not just religions, religions, all religions speak about this, but also um, uh, uh, traditional knowledge, uh, everything points to the notion of ego as being the most destructive force uh, there is among uh, human beings. Yeah? Uh, and I see a lot of what has happened you know, in terms of the way we progress um, as being an expression of unbridled ego. Right? We build and construct buildings that have no place in particular environments. We live in very uncomfortable surroundings actually and so we impose further uh, you know, environmentally destructive things like air conditioning. Uh, we pretend we live in winter uh, rather than create all the necessary space that we have for you know, natural flow of air. Uh, any architect will be able to tell you that they built houses a lot better 40 years ago. This is where Western colonialism, I think, <clears throat> uh, and materialist thinking, philosophical materialist thinking, contributed a lot to this understanding that basically nature was there for our disposal. Hmm? Uh, and of course, that went unchecked for decades and uh, you know, close to a century now, uh, and we've been unable to rein that back. Uh, we have given ourselves a sense of importance beyond everything else. Uh, when the reality is that the human being is the most dispensable thing on earth. If we disappear tomorrow, in about a hundred years, hundred and fifty, hundred thousand years, uh, you know, the, the environment and nature will replenish itself, but we'll all be gone. My bigger and bigger quarrel is with this notion of civilization, uh, that somehow with civilization uh, we are progressing. Uh, and we are heading towards a destiny in which our role as people uh, can be fulfilled, but at the very great expense of everything around us. Governments have a lot uh, to be blamed for this because governments support entire systems, you see, corporate, corporatism, everything is, is supported by, by, by governments. Uh, and we have to find ways uh, in which we can uh, uh, sustain ourselves and even be productive. Uh, that are a lot less destructive, uh, that are more, for example, you know, uh, faithful uh, to the communities from which we have come, the environment that we live in. Uh, Malaysia is a good example. Every time we talk about progress and development, we talk about infrastructural progress and development. We don't talk about how, for example, rural communities you know, can work together, be productive, uh, uh, where you know, uh, development doesn't mean that every young person uh, from the age of 18 has to migrate towards a city and work in a factory. And uh, let's talk about consumer culture, la, you know. Uh, that's a very nice ep epiphanous term, consumer culture. It is greed, that's what it is. Uh, it is culture motivated by uh, the idea of possession. I think what motivates so much of the world today is greed, of course. But what lies behind greed is power struggles, you know power struggles going on at so many different levels and power struggle is all about ownership and about possession from the political uh, to the economic uh, to the material and they're all intertwined of course right uh, but we have constructed an entire world around that that doesn't then take into account communities environment uh, nature uh, and our place in the interaction of of all these things The thing about living simply is about how unsimple it actually is. Uh, it's not easy uh, to live simply, uh, as, again, as you can tell. But again, it's what you surround yourself uh, with. Uh, live simply uh, so that others um, uh, may simply live, uh, basically is an uh, incredible maxim about how much sacrifice uh, is required to sustain life. It really is about awareness. Uh, and uh, self-contemplation all the time. Uh, even someone so concerned and obsessed with social revolution, like uh, um, Mao, uh, could talk about the revolution begins from within, you know. Uh, and uh, we, we, we have arrived at a point where we must all be personally accountable, you know. And we have to ask very fundamental questions about what we are doing in the most minimal of ways 
uh, to kind of you know improving the situation that our entire world is in uh, you know so the moment you can begin to be very aware of who you are and what your journey is in this world uh, then things around you become uh, a lot more uh, livable there's also a wonderful zen saying this is no snowflake ever falls in an inappropriate place you know and i think we need to understand uh, our place in the world in that kind of way you are here for a particular time for a particular reason and you need to make sense of what that reason is